Today we're talking about the EPA, or the Energy Protection Agency. Oh wait, they're the Environmental Protection Agency. Huh, could have fooled me. Despite the fact that next to nobody watches the episodes I make when I talk about EPA policy changes, I'm probably going to keep making them because I have a dog in this fight. You see, I drink water and don't want to die a horrible death. Share if you think other people are in a similar boat. Now, Before I get into today's episode, I want to emphasize to any climate change deniers out there watching this, this episode has nothing to do with climate change. It instead has to do with the less controversial dumping of literal toxic waste into rivers and streams. As if normal waste wasn't bad enough. If that doesn't sound like a sensational enough story for you, just imagine I'm saying the government is putting stuff in your water to make the freaking frogs gay. Wow, 2 million views? Except instead of frogs, it's millions of Americans each year. Instead of homosexuality, it's cancer. And instead of unsourced claims, it's the EPA's press statements. Only problem is, this isn't a conspiracy, it's just business as usual. So what's happening? Well, as you can imagine, it's not as simple as EPA Director Andrew Wheeler breaking a champagne bottle to inaugurate America's newest toxic waste dumping pipe. That's right, we're skipping the sizzle in this episode and heading right to the stake. To understand what's going on here, we need to go back to 2015 when Obama's EPA was passing a new rule to regulate the dumping of toxic waste. Now, before I explain the plan itself, I need to talk about the variable that made this new regulation possible. Now, not to go full BuzzFeed on you, but you'll never guess what the variable that changed was to make this possible. Drum roll, please. The cost of coal plants implementing those regulatory changes. You see, when the EPA considers a new policy, they weigh two variables. How expensive it's going to be for coal companies to not dump toxic waste into our water supply versus the economic value of thousands of additional Americans dying each year. It's weird, but let's not shoot the messenger on this one. In 2015, the EPA looked at the state of technology and said, the price is finally right. With three decades of new technology under our belt, the cost of implementing these measures to reduce the amount of literal poison we dump into the streams and rivers as a byproduct of coal energy production will now be about the equivalent cost of the damages if we let the dumping continue. So we can implement this strategy, finally. The morbid calculation estimated that the regulations would stop about 1.4 billion pounds of toxic metals and other pollutants from pouring into rivers and streams, and cost the industry $480 million a year. Now, there were some truly bizarre graphs in these proposals evaluating the monetary value of infant IQ losses from mercury exposure, cancer, and of course cardiovascular issues. The list goes on and on. And I bring those charts up because I want to make sure when people hear me say that the EPA is monetizing death and development issues here, I am speaking very literally. So because the cost of implementing regulatory measures fell to a point where the numbers finally came close to matching, new limitations on toxic dumping into streams and rivers were put into place. Well, kind of. The new regulation updated dumping rules and said that each plant must comply between 2018 and 2023 depending on when it needs a new Clean Water Act permit. When you reapply for your Clean Water Act permit, you're now going to be held to a higher standard than before. Let's sit back and watch these power plants improve themselves at an estimated annual cost of about $480 million or lose those permits. So what happened this week? Well, enter EPA administrator and a man who's about as effective at his job as Bernie Sanders would be as the CEO of Goldman Sachs, Andrew Wheeler. Who would have thought that an ex-coal lobbyist might be more concerned with that other green? What he did was look at the EPA policy and say, whoa, that is an unreasonable burden to put on coal companies. That might sound weird coming from the Environmental Protection Agency, rather than maybe the Department of Energy. 
Hey guys, I just realized that if we don't protect the environment, that could really help private enterprise and the energy sector. What's our mission statement again? Protect the environment at some costs. Eh, food for thought. Now, this administration has placed a huge focus on energy dominance and transforming America from an energy importer to a country whose private energy companies can compete with the Middle East, Russia, and Venezuela in exporting raw fossil fuels to foreign countries. And they've done a pretty good job doing it. The concern is that these ambitions will be hampered by extra costs imposed by restrictions to dumping toxic waste into rivers and streams. Coal is especially struggling as, well nowadays it's a bit of a fossilized fuel. It's expensive and inefficient when compared with natural gas and renewables. Because of this, EPA officials hailed this toxic regulation removing move as a milestone in Mr. Trump's policy of achieving energy dominance. Great. Next we're going to hear from the Department of Education saying, you know what, if we don't teach large portions of the population, we could save a lot of money. So what was the actual policy change? Well, for the sake of keeping things simple, the Environmental Protection Agency regulations scaled back the types of wastewater treatment technologies that utilities must install to protect rivers and other waterways, and it also pushed back on compliance dates and exempted some power plants from taking any action at all. To clarify, there's not going to be more toxic waste pouring into our water supply as a result of these actions, but don't hold your breath for improvements. Or maybe do, because this all has a spillover effect into air quality. Now, This move is being criticized by the one person talking about it besides me and Andrew Wheeler for having an adverse health effect on the over 1.1 million people who live within 3 miles of a coal plant are disproportionately poor and, well I'm not sure if this shifts the needle for anybody, but are also disproportionately white when compared to the national average. We'll just put it this way, West Virginian water will continue to be very representative of the periodic table. So that's what just happened with the EPA and toxic waste regulations. Things aren't getting worse, but improvement has been delayed. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, and maybe I could get myself another tie with that money, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.